Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with the guide. This time I'm going to show you how to render your gameplay footage with HDR. Keep in mind this is strictly a gameplay conversation. This is not meant to cover anything re recorded or filmed with a camera. I've never used HDR cameras, never color graded that footage, never color graded footage in general. This is really just strictly for those of you who are capturing gameplay using certain capture cards that support HDR, and for those of you who want to upload that footage and make sure that it is in HDR after you edit it. Okay, so with that disclaimer out of the way, first thing I want to cover is the type of capture card that you will need in order to even get started with this process. So the two biggest companies I would say are Elgato and Avermedia in terms of capture cards. There is also Magewell, although I'm not 100% certain if they have any HDR supported cards. So I'll just be talking about Elgato and Avermedia for this video. Keep in mind, I'm not sponsored by either of those companies, but if either of them ever wanted to sponsor me, my email is on my channel. Okay, so there are a number of capture cards that support 4K HDR recording. For Elgato, we'll cover two of them, or the only two actually. There's the 4K60 Pro. This is an internal PCI Express card. And there's also the 4K60S Plus. This is an external capture card that will record right to an SD card if you like. I believe you can also plug this into a computer and just use your hard drive. Um, I do not have this card, the 4K60S Plus. I do own the 4K60 Pro though. I use it as a backup card also for streaming. If I wanna do a clean recording and stream, I'll use this. Um, I don't use it that often, but I, I can vouch for this. It is pretty good. Uh, Avermedia, on the other hand, also has two cards. The internal solution they have is the Live Gamer 4K. This is my daily driver. Pretty much every single video that you've seen on my channel since February or March 2019 was recorded using this capture card. Uh, so I can really vouch for this. Um, and then Avermedia also sells the Live Gamer Bolt, which this picture is a little busy, but it's this thing right here, this box. This is the Live Gamer Bolt, and this is basically uh, Avermedia's answer to the 4K 60S Plus. This is an external capture card that does support uh, 4K HDR recording. There is one thing you want to look out for, though, when selecting capture cards. Um, Avermedia offers capture cards that do 4K 60 HDR pass-through, meaning that you can, you know, from your PlayStation, your Xbox, or I guess even your PC, if you have a dual PC setup, you can output your your signal in 4K HDR, and whatever you're recording on will look 4K HDR. It'll support it, but the recording will not be 4K HDR. I think the Live Gamer Ultra supports 4K capture, but not HDR. Um, so... Yeah, so this will record at 4K 30, but you can pass through 4K 60, uh, 4K HDR 60. I have used this card. It's pretty good, um, but I think it's only like 100 bucks more to go to the uh, Live Gamer 4K, so just save up. That, that would be my advice. Uh, but this is basically your crash course into what cards support 4K HDR. Uh, I will say Elgato has a bit better of a website because at the bottom of all their uh, card pages. They have this really handy chart that tells you what each one supports. So you can uh, really easily pick one out, like pick the best one for yourself. Aver Media, unless it's hidden somewhere on their website, uh, has no such thing. And like they give you like the full spec sheet down here, which is helpful. Um, but I, I find this chart really useful every time I look at it. Okay, so you want to make sure you have one of these cards and then you can record in 4k hdr uh, in order to play back 4k hdr footage you will need to use something like vlc media player it's completely free um, i've used it for probably the better part of a decade or two at this point um, totally free and it is one of the only players that will support hdr footage without needing to buy like some premium codec so just download VLC and you'll be able to watch everything. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to mention is that none of these capture cards and nothing as of this recording on the market supports 4K 120 hertz capture. 
there may be something on the studio grade level that maybe Elgato and Avermedia Media haven't created yet for consumers that supports 120 hertz at 4K. Um, I'm not aware of it, but in case you're looking to capture that, there's nothing that does it yet. Um, most of these cards, though, will support uh, 1080p, 120 hertz. So yeah, like the 4K 60 Pro supports 1080p 240 and 1440p 144 hertz. Um, I know the Live Gamer 4K supports quite a few things. Um, just quickly reading it through here. Yeah, I, I know it supports higher frame rates, uh, but not at 4K. So there's nothing on the market yet for that. And YouTube doesn't even support 120 hertz. Um, so it's sort of pointless at, at this stage of the game as a content creator. Um, but that is the crash course on all that. We've spent a long time talking about it, but I wanted to get as much information up front to you uh, before you actually go down this, this really annoying render path. Okay, so uh, we'll do a quick recap on how things worked in Adobe Premiere 2021. Um, I can only speak to Adobe Premiere. I cannot speak to DaVinci Resolve or Sony Vegas or anything else. I strictly use Premiere. Uh, I haven't used, I think the last time I used Sony Vegas was like 2009. So, and I never touched DaVinci Resolve. So sorry if you're looking for help on that, but I am not your guy. Okay, so uh, now we'll actually talk about HDR rendering. So in uh, Adobe Premiere 2021, the way you do it is you would click your sequence, go to File, Export Media, and then the Export dialog box would pop up. And then you would set your format to H.264. All these settings will be pulled from the source file. So, you know, my source file is recorded in 3840 by 2160, which is 4K, uh, 59.94 frames per second, and then progressive and square pixels. You want to make sure you check render at maximum depth, and then you will have software encoding. Um, I have an NVIDIA card, and I can't speak to AMD cards, but for HDR rendering... Uh, you cannot use hardware encoding. It's not supported yet. So even if you have CUDA enabled, it's not really going to help you here when uh, handling HDR footage. So it does have to be on software encoding. And then your profile is going to be set to high 10. And then you'll have, um, you'll, you want to check uh, Rec 2020 color primaries and high dynamic range. Uh, from Adobe Premiere 2021, you did not need to check include HDR 10 metadata. It was not necessary. And this is actually the impetus for me making this guide in the first place, because when I upgraded to 2022, this section looks different and you do have to do things differently. So if you have 2021, these are your settings, just render that out and you're good to go. So switching over to Premiere 2022, uh, you start off the same, click your sequence, file, export, media, and then the dialog box pops up make this a little bit bigger okay and then same thing h264 the top part is the same render at maximum depth but here we have a few more options and this is where things can get a little confusing so again software encoding is required set your profile to high 10 and then your export color space should be uh, rec 2100 hlg rec 2020 here is not really what you want you want to use 2100 hlg you can use 2100 PQ, uh, but from what I've, excuse me, from what I have noticed, um, my footage, and I'll actually show this to you right now. So my uh, source footage is recorded in PQ, but if I were to render in PQ, um, I've noticed that the colors flicker a little bit, especially when dipping from black. Um, I can actually show you what I mean in a, in a finished product, uh, but you want to use. Uh, HLG, so let's go back to that. Okay, so we use 2100 HLG. I leave the nits at 203. I don't mess with that. Um, I'm sure you could bump it up to 300, but I just haven't really messed with it, so I don't bother. Uh, and you want to check include HDR10 metadata. Doing that, so checking this box, opens up the color primaries option, and here is where you want to select 2020. 709 is basically SDR. You definitely don't want that. And P3D65 is, I believe, Apple ProRes. Um, I do not work on Macs, and I have never recorded something in ProRes uh, codec, so I never use it. Just use Rec 2020, and then that's it. Uh, you can render from here. 
I recommend doing CBR and then getting your bit rate uh, somewhere around what your captured bit rate is. So Adobe, uh, Adobe, Avermedia, Rec Central, uh, with the 4K HDR profile, records at a variable bit rate between 80 and 90 megabits per second. So I just put it right in the middle at 85. Um, you can do VBR one pass, but YouTube's codec, it kind of like eats this up and will not make it look as good as your raw rendered footage. So it's kind of just a waste of time to use VBR. Instead, just use CBR, which is a constant bit rate, and it'll look just fine. And then you queue it up and you export it. I have noticed that the render times in Adobe Premiere 2022, or rather Adobe Media Encoder 2022, with respect to HDR footage, the render times are faster, considerably faster, than 2021. So something has been changed. I can't nail down exactly what it was, but something has changed, and this is a bit of a quicker workflow. So it could just be some internal software changes that they've made to make HDR easier to work with and faster to render. I have no idea, but I have noticed that it is quicker. Okay, so just say you have you know, finished exporting, you've uploaded everything, and now you're waiting. So what I'll do is, we talked about PQ before, so I will open this video here, which was a PQ export. And so we'll full screen it. And then, so this is just from the Elden Ring beta. I'm gonna pull up the map here, and you saw there the colors flickered. It's really strange. I don't know what causes that, but it only happens when I render in PQ. So always render in HLG. So let's go to the HLG footage now, or HCL, I'm so sorry. Uh, HCL, I don't know where I got HLG from. Um, so here is the HCL, and you'll notice if we go to that same spot, the flicker does not happen. There you go, it, it looks just as it did when I recorded it. So one of the reasons, um, if you follow me on Twitter, I was spending the last month kind of trying to figure out like why there was so much artifacting in my footage uh, whenever I would render it. And it's because my monitor was not displaying HDR correctly. Um, I had a TN panel, it was a, it was a BenQ. Um, I went out and bought another monitor. It was a Gigabyte 32 inch, I think the model is M32SA. Um, and it looks perfect on this screen. Even while recording this using shadow play, I know it's gonna look a little artifacted, but trust me, um, it's it was the screen that was causing the problems. Um, so if you're having some difficulty with HDR and you notice a lot of artifacting, um, just know that it could be your monitor. And that's a really expensive problem to figure out, believe me, I know. But if you have a TN panel, it doesn't display HDR super well, you want to go with IPS, um, and uh, my IPS monitor is, H is rated at HDR 400. Uh, really good TVs are rated at HDR 1000. There are HDR 1000 uh, computer monitors out there, but I wouldn't go that crazy. They are incredibly expensive, even more than uh, the 800 bucks I spent on this monitor that I'm using now. So just keep that in mind. It is an expensive uh, little hobby if you want to go nuts with HDR. Okay, so... Uh, that is, those are the render settings, but now I want to talk for a second about YouTube uh, specifically. So if we go to my content panel here, um, you'll notice that um, whenever you upload a, a video to YouTube, it'll take a while to process. And if we go to uh, this returnal playthrough that I uploaded, and it should be going live soon. Um, actually, maybe we'll try this one. Hmm. Okay, they kind of... Man, I feel like they change this all the damn time. That's what I was looking for. Okay. So it's because the video wasn't public. Um, all right, let's just quickly do this. I'm not making this public at all, but let's just get it off this screen here. Okay. So, perfect. You'll notice here that in the little summary, we have the video link, the file name, and then video quality. We have SD, HD, and 4K. When a video is processing, whatever it's processing at the time will be blinking. So if we were to actually go here and edit this information really fast. Great. Right, so these are all blinking right now. So it's not even done processing HD, definitely not done processing 4K, and it probably looks like garbage in SD. There is nothing here that tells you whether or not it is processing HDR. 
I can tell you right now, this Returnal playthrough, as of a few minutes ago, still had not finished processing HDR. But it is available in 4K. So YouTube is telling us that it is technically done processing, but in reality, it's not, because this video is not yet available in 4K. In, sorry, in HDR. It is only available in SDR 4K. So the way you can tell, um, unfortunately, there's no way to tell whether or not it is actually processing the HDR and your settings have worked. There is no way to tell that. But you can tell when a video is done processing HDR because when you go to watch it and HDR is enabled in Windows, you will see HDR as your quality setting. So all of your resolutions will have HDR. Uh, I guess I should show you really quick. You want to make sure that on your desktop, you right click, you go to display settings, and then you click your monitor if you have more than one and you click Use HDR. You have to enable that in order for YouTube to then uh, serve you HDR footage. So that's how you do that. But you basically just have to sit and wait until this cogwheel says HDR. Even if the video here is it's technically done processing, YouTube to this day, I'm recording this December 14th, does not tell you if it's available in HDR. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to upload this video and just just make it live immediately, and then I guarantee you, probably by the 16th, it'll be available in HDR. Sometimes it takes several days up to like a couple weeks, depending on how long the video is. This Returnal playthrough probably will not be available in HDR, I'd say before Christmas. Like sometimes it just takes an excruciatingly long time. And unfortunately, there is no processing progress bar to tell you what's happening. Hopefully that changes in the future, but as of this recording, it hasn't. Okay, so I think that's it. Uh, everything for HDR. So again, just real quick to recap, highlight your sequence, go to File, Export, Media, and then change this. It is HLG. I don't know why I wrote that HCL. Rec 2100 HLG, uh, include HDR10 metadata, and set your color primaries to Rec 2020. And that's it. All right, cool. I hope I covered everything. Again, I'm not an expert by any means when it comes to um, HDR or anything. I'm just somebody who likes to play games as they are, I guess, intended to be played while recording them. So I went out and bought HDR equipment so I could play games in HDR. And I want to make that content available to you in HDR. So that's why I know all this stuff. But I really don't know anything about color grading or tone mapping, nothing. This is really strictly for this one use case of gameplay footage captured with one of four capture cards. Cool. So I hope I helped. If you have any questions, leave a comment. I will really do my best to help you out. I know I say that at the end of every video, and I try my hardest to, to help people, but there may be some unanswerable questions that you guys have, and I'm sorry about that. Um, <laughs> but uh, there is another content creator out there, uh, Epus Vox, E-P-U-S-V-O-X. Uh, he is extremely knowledgeable about this stuff. And uh, I actually watched his uh, capture card recommendation video several years ago. And that's how I got turned on to the Live Gamer 4K. Check out his channel if you have really in-depth questions that I can't help you with. But that's it. All right. I'm Sweet Johnny Cage. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.